somebody telling it. Well, due to the fact the Bible speaks of many things concerning prophecy, and particularly what we're talking about on Sunday night, we're talking about the doctrine of devils going on at the end of time. The doctrine of devils is the doctrine of distributing fortunes because when you look there in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their consciences seared as with a hot iron. Men's consciences are seared. They're just cauterized is the word, K-A-U-T-E-R-I-Z-O, K-A-U-T-E-R-I-Z-O. Or it's our word cauterize. It means to, to, when you cauterize something, you just sear it and you callous it. Men's consciences are callous. They don't have any conscience. These people that claim to be preaching the doctrine of demons, except they don't call it that, they preach the doctrine of distributing fortunes, and that's who I'm talking about, particularly the charismatics. Now, I believe the Baptists do that too, but I'm zeroing in on the charismatics. The Baptists will say, well, now, if you don't come here and you don't tithe here, now God's going to deal with you and he's going he's to uh, take this out and your, make your transmission fall on the ground. Well, I don't know. That may happen. It may not happen. But it's not because you're not going to some Baptist per church that preaches free will. It's because you're not following God in truth. Now, I do, not, I do not like the charismatic doctrine. I hate it with a passion just as much as I hate Christ's mass. I despise the charismatic movement. Those are not preachers of the gospel. They call themselves preachers. They call themselves preachers of the gospel. Don't like charismatics at all. They cheat and lie to the poor and steal from them. They steal from poor widow ladies. And what they do is they take certain verses out of the Bible and twist them and wrench them to their own benefit and say that uh, God wants you rich if you send your money to me. And I don't know if you realize, most people don't realize how big the charismatic movement is. Most, a lot of you don't even watch the TV and watch them, do you? They are humongous. It is the fastest growing religious movement in the world. You can be a Baptist and be in it. You can be a Catholic and be in it. You can be a... Pentecostal, the Church of Christ, Charismatic, Lutheran, Episcopal, anything and be in it. What they preach is God wants everybody rich and wealthy. And the big high rollers like Kenneth Copeland and Fred Price and, and T.D. Jakes and Benny Hinn and many more, R.W. Schambach, he's one of the oldies, and Dwight Thompson, and many of the Baptists have, have all those are Pentecostal, and many of the Baptists have flown in, flowed through them and gone with them uh, like, uh, like James Robeson. He's an old Southern Baptist, but he falls in with them and holds hands with them. And if you hold hands with, with false doctrine, you're a partaker of their evil deeds. If anyone comes bringing any other doctrine, you do not bid them God's speed, much less hold hands with them, skip along through the tulips. You don't do that. And... Uh, they are, these men are false, they're liars, they're, they're not Christian. Christians take their cross and die daily. If you don't take a cross and die daily, you can't be my disciple, Jesus said. So if you're Christian, you deny self, you're going to be hated by the world. That's what the Bible says. You say, are every one of those, well, the majority of them are unbelievers. I wouldn't even begin to try to guess which one of them believes God. If you don't believe in death to self and being hated, if you believe you have to be friends of the world, you're really messed up in your theology and you don't believe God. Belief is not merely saying, I'm a Christian and I believe in Jesus. That's not being a Christian. Christians take a cross. The cross comes from telling the truth. If you tell the truth, it's because you have a hunger to know it. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they'll be filled. You have to be hungering after righteousness, but you have to suffer for righteousness' sake. So whenever you hunger for righteousness, you hunger for truth, and then you want to teach it to people. And when you teach it to people, somebody's going to crucify you during the day at your work, on the job, and this is a figurative crucifixion. They will, they will kill you or they'll put you to death figuratively, and death means separation. It doesn't mean annihilation. Death is the word thanatos, T-H-A-N-A-T-O-S in the Greek. So somewhere in your life, you have to suffer. You have to be dying. 
Everybody's going to die sometimes. As a Christian, I'm not talking about literal death. You're going to die somehow. You're going to take your cross and you're going to tell people truth and you can't keep it inside when you learn it, can you? You cannot. I can't keep it inside. I go out, I leave the house sometimes, I just feel so bad, and it'll be summer. I say, oh, well, I feel terrible. I'm going to put this shirt on that says God does not love everybody, and preachers are lying on the front of it now. And I'll go out in public with it on. Somebody says, what are you talking about? And all of a sudden I get wound up. Boom, I don't feel like preaching, but I do now. You have to obligate yourself to do what you need to do. Put yourself on the line, and that's what I do. Now, I know some of you are not going to do what I do, and you're not going to do what some of the guys do here that go out and preach to everybody that they see, but you will preach some. You can't keep these truths to yourself, can you? Does anybody here can actually say, I can keep these truths inside of me without saying them to anybody? You can't, can you? It just gets inside of you, crawl, and you're going, man, I can't let them get by with this. And you got to say something, even if they just cut you down and cut you off and walk away. Well, I said what I could. And you know what? Don't think, don't think to yourself, well, if I'd only said this and I've only said that, we've all said that at times. You said what you were supposed to say because God's ordained it all, hadn't he? Now, we're talking about 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Men will depart from the faith. They'll depart from death to self and they'll give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demon. Men are going to be distributing fortunes at the end of time. That's what they're going to be preaching. That's what the charismatics preach. They say that they believe that all you have to do is use positive words and you can create your own, you can create your own world. They all say that. Charles Cap says if you say anything that it will create, how can it create your own creation when God has already determined the end from the beginning, from ancient times, everything that's, got, not going, that's going to be done? How can, they, how can you create with words when the Bible says, God, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world, and then... Paul says that he works all things after the counts of his own will and that all power is given to him in heaven and earth. How can anybody turn around what God is doing and that's everything and they say you can actually move the hand of God to do what you want him to do and the Bible says none can stay the hand of God or stop the hand of God from doing what he wants to do in Daniel 4.35. What these men are, they're liars. You say, how can you call them a liar? Maybe they just don't know. If you're teaching, if you've never had any mathematics classes in your life, and you've never gone to school, and you all of a sudden you say one day, well, I want to start teaching math, general math in the ninth grade. Well, are we going to be able to tell if you know anything or not? Are you going to be able to tell if you know anything or not? Certainly you will. And especially if you hear somebody work some mathematics and watch him work some mathematics on a board, you're going to know you don't know. When men haven't studied and they don't know and then they hear somebody that knows something, they know they don't know. But they're going to ignore it because they like their job. They got a cushy job and they're flying high and got a real nice uh, town car and they... They go to the hospitals and visit. They say, hi, you, Brother Jones. Well, let's pray for you, God. We pray you'll make this man well. Amen. Praise God. We'll be praying for you. I can, let me get in my fancy car and ride down the street and go see another person. I'll go see this person in their home over here. Oh, yes, I would like some coffee and cake. Thank you. Boy, this sure is an easy job I've got. And some little kid, some kid sees you. He's a teenager. Can I get me a cushy job like that? Yeah, you can. All you have to do is go to a seminary and stay there for about four years and you can start running for office in a church with your nice personality and you get you a job like this too. That's what all these kids in these Southern Baptist churches, I want me a nice job like that. Yep. It's not I want to serve God and have the world hate me and crucify me daily. Amen. That's not what they're wanting. You know how many I've, I've seen in church like that? 
I want me, I want to be a preacher too and give three points in a poem on Sunday morning and make people feel good and I feel good and, and then we get to go and be with another Jesus when we die. Yep. Yeah, so where are you going to be in hell? Do you know that's just as wicked as robbing banks and selling drugs? That's just as wicked because you're leading people off into sin when you got that nice little person. <laughs> me and Mary's TV is on last night, and that woman that sings, shake me, I rattle, squeeze me, I cry, that Mary said, she's just too nice. That country singer that comes on singing those, and it's a commercial, it's an infomercial. And she said, she, ain't she nice? I, she's had that same commercial on for 15, 20 years. Sells them every year at Christmas. She lives out of, works out of Memphis. And she's got that, I'm a nice person, smile on all the time. Nice people are going to go to hell. You know that? You have to be hated somewhere in your life. Jesus said so. If the world hated me, it will hate you. If it persecuted me, it will persecute you. Now, take that. And that's all there is to it. If a person is never hated, I asked this guy the other day. I was at the, at the grocery store. I said, you're not going to come to Grace and Truth Ministries. You can't come. I said, because if you come, you're going to lose your wife. He said, she's divorcing me. I said, well, you lose your mother. He said, well, I ain't going to lose my mama. I said, you will. You're going to have to be hated. And I said, are you hated? Well, yeah, I know you have to be. I said, no, no, listen to me. I said, just stop talking. Are you being hated for the words that's coming out of your mouth because you're telling people the truth? Well, yeah, man, it has to be hated. I said, no, are you hated? And he wouldn't answer me. I said, well, you have to go on your way because you're not going to come around us because this costs too much. He said, no, it's free. I said, no, it's not. Unless a man forsakes all that he has, he can't be my disciple. Amen. This is not free. Where do you come up with that? Jesus paid for us. That's not free, is it? And it's not free to us either. We, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. You mean you think you're free to live the way you want? No, you're not. Not if you belong to him. Now, I'm talking about these guys. I'm... A, I'm reading some of these. I've got tons of stuff off the Internet up here, but I'm going to read some of these charismatics. I'm reading some of the papers that I've got off the Internet, things they've said, and I've seen them say a lot of the same things on TV. There was a 